My name is Will Ayton. Um, I compose uh, the music that will be heard tonight on this concert by Parthenia, some of my best musical friends. We go to Staten Island, go to Bronx, go to Harlem, almost like if we don't do this, I won't visit this neighborhood and I won't get to meet those people. And then community gardens have those, um, a lot of local members. They have been doing growing, growing vegetables. They've been, been in a community for a long time already. So you get to talk with these local community members and which they are appreciating nature too. They are appreciating all the human connection as well. The main piece on the program is a series or perhaps a cycle of pieces uh, based upon William Blake's poetry and some of his writings. And it is a series of short pieces, uh, some of them with instruments and voice, others uh, with just there's some pure instrumental pieces, and some uh, pieces with instrument and the singer is actually speaking rather than singing. So there is a bit of variety within the cycle. It's called Reliquary for William Blake. And the idea is a kind of a dedication, a kind of homage to William Blake, his music, his thought, his writings, and his spirit. William Blake was part of a rather nebulous group uh, um, in the 18th century that were called dissenters. And they included many types of people. And one of the things they had in common was they were a little bit suspect of the establishment and a little bit of suspect of the established church, both the Anglican church and the Roman Catholic church. And they were very much uh, thinkers for themselves. Uh, they weren't all formal in their gatherings. In fact, I think what unified so many of them were that they were individualists. And um, having grown up in religion, in a very formal sense, my parents were missionaries and pastors, uh, there was a part of me that enjoyed uh, exploration of other areas too. I think we could use a few more dissenters today. <laughs> If William Blake is alive, what do you think he would like to see in this world? Do you think he will be happy, disappointed, <laughs> or you think he think oh, we are better, better than the time he lives? Because he lives in a quiet, chaotic time too. It was a chaotic time. It was yeah. during the Napoleonic Wars, and, and it was it was a difficult time. Mm. Uh, he got himself in trouble yeah. uh, because he. Too much. Blake's poems tend to rely upon the reader to bring these in to themselves, to respond in their own individual way. And so that's what I did. I, I tried to bring them in and own them, uh, make them my own. And then because music is my voice, as it were, it seemed, they seem to be able to translate well it's a very personal thing. I have no idea if it translates to others. And in fact, William Blake is very much that way. Um, many people thought of him as being a little cracked, uh, perhaps a little insane. But there's this wonderful quote, uh, a, a, a Baptist pastor of all things said that uh, something along the line of, yes, he may be cracked, but the cracks let in the light. I work at a piano. I started music late, 
And so uh, there are those composers that say you should compose without a piano so that your fingers don't tell you what to, <laughs> what to write down. And, and, and I understand that. But for me, the piano, um, because I used to improvise a lot, um, it, it allows me a place to verify what I'm hearing at a level that uh, is a little fuzzy sometimes. So, you know, as I joke about to my wife, the most important part of the pencil is the eraser. <laughs> Absolutely. And, 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 and when I do, my, my cleaning jobs are downstairs. So when I get to the piano, I built this big music rack for writing. And I take the vacuum cleaner and suck up all the eraser leaves. <laughs> One of the things I think I was uh, always sort of afflicted with was my love for the cello uh, in high school. And, but the cello and the non-fretted instruments are very difficult to start as an adult. And so by the time I jumped into playing the viola da gamba, it was already uh, after I'd had a degree. Um, and it was about the same time I started my master's degree. And so I was a late, really late starter on that. And there's something called the Viola da Gamba Society of America. And I quickly joined that and I started going to the summer gatherings uh, called conclaves. And there I met uh, the individuals that make up Parthenia. The first time they recorded it, they recorded it with a higher voice, and we had to transpose some of the pieces up. And so today's performance will be at the original pitch that I had originally written them. I mean, they worked at higher pitch too, but they didn't match the instruments quite so well. They weren't as idiomatic, but hopefully these will be a little easier for the players. It was written for them. We were just reminded time is over. <laughs> Hope this we can continue this conversation another way. Um, but thank you everyone for joining. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you for thank you very much. Cheers.